So number 17 then, the last question in the 2018 SQA Advanced Tire Mathematics of Mechanics. Five marks here for deriving an expression for the velocity of this situation here. And what does it say? A box of mass, let's just put it on the surface, a box of mass M is set in motion by initial impulse. As it moves along the surface, it experiences a resistive force which is proportional to the square of the velocity. By setting up a differential equation, show that the velocity of the box after t seconds can be expressed as V equals mi over i k t plus m squared. So this isn't that bad really, because there's no numbers, there's no calculations in this. You're just going to find the resultant motion by equating the forces the unbalanced force with acceleration. So what's happening then? We could put some initial things down. So it's going to start with an initial velocity. That's important, there's going to be an initial velocity there because it's been given a kick start by that impulse and you have to find its final velocity at a certain time. Well, what are the sum of the forces? I'll say some of the forces in the x direction. Well, there's only one. There's that force of friction, so that's a negative F, that resistive force. Since it's unbalanced, it's not equal to zero, it's going to result in an acceleration, so that will equal ma. Now, what is that force? Now, all it says about it is it's proportional to v squared, so I can write that as some constant times v squared. Now, if I want a final formula that says v equals, and there's no mentions of a, I'll need to replace that a, and since it's time I want in it, I'm going to use a as dv by dt. Doing that is the first mark. Now, you've got a differential equation. You can separate the variables here. So that means if I take, just read it backwards. So if I've got dv over v squared, I'm going to put that over this side, equals negative k upon m dt. So that's the variable separated. Then it says start to integrate. So I'll just put the integral sign in. I'm just going to pop this out of that because that's just a constant. You can have it inside if you like. That seems to be worth a mark. Now it's just a case of how do you want to go about finding the constant or absorbing the constant? You can either integrate that and have a plus C and then put in your initial conditions to find C. Or you can integrate them using the limits, which means incorporating the initial conditions to begin with. I think I'll do the integration using it. So t obviously goes from 0 to t, and v will go to, it's a, unfortunately I've got the variable v there, I'm just going to put a v naught, it's going to go from v naught to v. But you know what v naught is because you know that the impulse equals the change in momentum. That will be m v naught minus m times 0 because it was starting at rest. So I know that V0 will be I upon M. So that's worth a mark. I'll not put that in here because that just looks a bit messy. I'll just integrate this now. So integrating that up, that's power negative 2. So it's going to go up to power negative 1, but divide by the negative 1 makes it minus. This side will just be T. Negative K upon M, T. Now that's to get evaluated from 0 to T, and that's to get evaluated from V0 to V. So this side's easy, that'll just be negative kt upon m. This side, though, is going to be, I'll just take the negative out of it, now the negatives can disappear, of 1 upon v minus 1 upon v naught. Maybe in the next line I'll just knock out those negatives, kt upon m. Now, so that's 1 upon v, 1 upon v naught is 1 upon i over m, it's minus it, so if I take that across, it'll be plus 1 over i over m. So the i's at the bottom, so it'll be m upon i. Add these two together, so common denominator, m i. So the i needs to multiply this, so that's kt times i. The m has to multiply that, so that's m squared. And finally, flip them over. m i goes on top and kti plus m squared goes underneath. Now, putting in the initial conditions was worth a mark, and then getting the final result was worth a mark. 
Now, if you didn't like incorporating the initial conditions into the actual integration, you could just have gone through the normal route of integrating it and adding a constant. So negative 1 upon v would be negative kt upon m plus c. Then put in the initial conditions, which are when t is 0, v is i upon m. So substituting the 1 upon v will be the reciprocal, negative m upon i would be c. So now you could put that back into this one here. Negative 1 upon v is negative kt upon m plus c. Notice that c is a negative, so it's minus m upon i. So you can get rid of all those negatives. So 1 upon v, get rid of all, multiplying everything by negative 1. Add the fractions together now, it's just the same as before. So that numerator is multiplied by i, that numerator is multiplied by m, and then flip it over. m i over k t i minus, no, it's a plus, oh dear me, m squared. Because we flipped all those negatives over. So there was, find the constant, and then rearrange it.